So I'm going to talk about uh, implicit function declarations and I will try to make this presentation very short so that we can have a bit of a discussion in the allocated time. So what are implicit function declarations? So what I'm showing here is um, basically K and RC, so from the 70s probably. And as you can see, there are no keywords here. And uh, the uh, curious thing is that even though there are no includes, no keywords, uh, uh, it, uh, it's still syntactically valid C. And even today with GCC's defaults, it compiles. It's, uh, the compiler produces lots of warnings, but it compiles and it links. And if you're on 32-bit and a 32-bit architecture, then it will likely run as well. Even though we didn't provide any correct prototypes or includes or even a return type for main. So why is this a problem? Um, implicit function declarations on 64-bit architectures are particularly painful because the implicit declaration that is generated if you refer to an identifier using a function call syntax, um, uh, the, the, this automatically generated declaration doesn't have a prototype and its return type is automatically set to int. So for example, for the get end function, you get an int return type instead of a pointer. And the exactly 664 ABI is such that uh, if you use that value in like printf, then the other 32 bits are required to be discarded and set to zero. So uh, the pointer is likely not valid anymore and you get a crash at runtime. Um, that's pretty obvious, I think. Um, what's slightly more uh, confusing is if you have a function that returns a bool result, then uh, x8664 has a special ABI for that and uh, only eight bits of the register is significant. So if you look at that register as an int, then yeah, your Boolean checks still look like, uh, I mean, the compiler will accept them and warn about the implicit declaration, but uh, it's not likely that you get the right result. And one thing that I realized when uh, uh, hearing the uh, presentation on the M1, M1 Apple, new Apple AI64 ABI. Um, uh, the, the lack of a prototype means that all functions are variadic. So this only works if your API um, for, for arguments which are passed on the stack, uh, you basically have uh, promote them to some sort to a type that looks like a long, a full register basically. Otherwise, this uh, this uh, the, you can't get interoperability without um, having the correct prototype. And I think for for the PB664 LE ABI, that actually was a consideration. Uh, maybe they would have liked to do it differently, but yeah, why can't, and I, I want to show why this is a difficult problem now. Uh, so one thing that makes this a little bit more annoying even is that if you link a shared object, you can actually have a successful link and the library can be loaded at runtime successfully if you la lose lazy binding. And this means that you never actually get any diagnostic unless you actually manage to run the, the binary and execute the right path during testing. And this is not very well known, unfortunately. So this, uh, we, we made some changes uh, to OpenSSR. We basically switched from 1.1 to version 3.0 and as uh, part of that, some functions were removed. And what happened is that we were actually built, uh, able to build .NET 
the .NET Core runtime successfully, but the result was um, a, a corrupted binary, a slightly corrupted binary, because it referred to the open SSL function that was no longer there. And even though the build succeeded, uh, part of it was broken. And I raised this with the open SSL developers and they didn't realize that the 2chain default on Linux is actually um, to have both lazy binding and implicit function declarations enabled in the compiler and linker. Um, so even if uh, OpenSSL Op developers didn't know that and it's difficult to see that how, how people who run smaller projects to get this right. So the, the question is, uh, yeah, what can we do about this? So we can tell developers to build with this additional warning and uh, warning flag and turn the warning into an error. That should be easy, but again, it's difficult to reach all the, all, all the developers. So we probably should make the switch in GCC itself. But we can only do that right now for new programs because um, we have tons of existing autoconf checks that have implicit function declarations in them. And if the uh, configure test fails, not because the feature is missing in the platform, but because there's an implicit function declaration, you lose that feature in the, uh, in the build. And because autoconf is magic, it automatically disables the test suite bits for that. So you still get a consistent build result but uh, the feature is gone. And this is not entirely unusual, even for large and important projects. Uh, GCC itself had an issue. Um, this is a, how this looks like. This is a autocon frog, uh, fragment. And what is missing here is an include directive for uh, uh, on unistandard.h because that is the header that includes the syscall function prototype. sys slash syscall.h does not actually include the prototype, only the constants. And this is uh, basically reason why it's so difficult to fix as well, because you have to go into this other old autocon fragments and add missing includes. And then for stuff that's supposed to support really old platforms, you don't really know if they have all the standard header files. So obviously we know that Linux has unistandard.h, so that's easy to fix, very easy to fix. But if this is if this were an old configure check that's supposed to run on Sun S4 or something like that, then you really don't know if they have the full complement of current POSIX headers. Probably not. So. This is why I say that enabling this at the distribution level is hard. So if we just flip on the switch um, and build a distribution with that, uh, with those uh, warnings as errors, then we get quite a bit of different re resulting binaries, unfortunately. And builds even succeed. So it's not just that the build fails, but you get a successful build and the result has different features. Um, so we made a couple of attempts to get this done in Fedora. Um, the latest attempt uses uh, the first, uh, the, 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 the zeroth attempt, so to speak, was just to enable it in the compiler flags and that sort of crashed and burns, burned uh, across the distribution. That wasn't really nice. Um, the first real attempt was do, doing a config log config.h diff, diffing, and that was implemented by Jeff Law in one of his test builders. Uh, yeah, and this doesn't really work for all packages because not everything uses autoconf that has problems with, with this change. And I'm now contemplating to put uh, patch GCC into the build root, into a special build root, we build a distribution and for each package, look at the end of the package build, whether the a directory that gets populated with these 
error notes is still empty. So if we ever run into an implicit function declaration during the build process, we uh, can detect this at the end of the build, even if the, uh, the build system itself ignored the build failure. Um, yeah, I haven't run this yet. I try, I just want to see if, if there's support for this. And there's, there's unfortunately, even if we have these, uh, if, if we do this in Fedora, it, uh, it's, it's not actually easy to share the results with the rest of the world. Uh, one reason is that it seemed uh, that this seems to correlate a lot with uh, lot, with old code bases, with old build systems, and those tend to have upstreams which aren't particularly active. So if we've patched that in Fedora and have our patch, then it may not be uh, easy to make sure that everyone gets these patches before we switch the default in GCC upstream. On the other hand, it's 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 not really interesting work fixing those packages. But uh, yeah, I think we all have these days where we don't feel like doing really creative stuff. So yeah, gloomy November days it is probably for this. And one thing that surprised me is that Apple actually made the transition, but they didn't fix too many upstream projects. Uh, so homebrew users are currently screwed, I suppose. Um, and uh, I, what I didn't realize is that this is due to the transit, probably due to the new Darwin AX64 ABI, which can't really do implicit function declarations anymore. But in, I, I think I still, uh, my personal opinion is that if we should do this and the improvement in development experience is real, especially uh, the Boolean function result mismatch tends uh, it tends to confuse people and they come to us and think that we have a compiler bug and giving a clear diagnostic where we can and we can actually do that and not uh, have just a warning that scrolls by and is missed by the developer would really help people here. So it, I think it's too late for GCC 12, but we might be able to do it for GCC 13. Um, there are some questions about mechanics, like uh, uh, I don't think we should tie it to the standards version. We should enable it for C99 and later standards because that matches what ISO says and probably have a separate dash F flag to control the behavior. I think it's not really great to, to have a warning for this like we do today um, and enable W error for this one by default, it doesn't sound very consistent to me. Yeah, that's completely wrong to enable W error by default. That's yeah, that yeah. that's what Apple did in, in their clang yeah. downstream. It's trying to make it as an error by default. Uh, it it already is a warning by default. Yeah. Uh, 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 without any warning flags, right? Uh, and it has been for quite a few years, I think. I'm not I'm not sure actually. I didn't check. Uh, and and that's probably the reason that Apple didn't see see many problems because most people actually do look at the warnings or, or enough people to look at the warning. But not for configure checks. Not for configure checks, no, no. Yeah. That's yeah. And that's the problem we have on, on the distribution of it. I think that that's the problem that Homebrew also has. So how can we fix it in the configure checks? Well, what if I see in it will uh, change the flags, the compilation flags to to disable the error? Uh, during configure or? Yes, I see in it, the beginning. The problem is a lot of the configure files that are out there can't be regenerated. We ran into oh, this with okay. LTO as well. Yeah, it's... That that is a it sounds like such an easy path, but it doesn't actually work. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, and there are also um, build, uh, build systems that don't use configure. Yeah, and 
Yeah, that's one one thing you highlighted, Florian, is is the test we did before, they they massively failed. They showed how big this problem was, but they didn't touch any of the systems that don't use autoconf. That was the only stuff we tested. It's a it's a fair amount of the distro, but there's still a lot of things out there. It's a mess. As you found out, implicit function declarations do not actually work with all APIs. Nope, uh, they don't. Yeah. I, I think you know, the idea of, of essentially packing up the so that we can store these things away as, as kind of a side effect of, its, uh, of running GCC and then post build looking for those uh, artifacts. Um, that sounds pretty viable because it's independent of autoconf and the build system. Essentially, anything that calls GCC is going to create these things for us and allow us to find all these problems. So I, I, I like that, Florian. And so the question is, uh, you know, <laughs> once we get that data, and I think it's, as you mentioned, Florian, it is highly correlated to old, practically dead projects. How do we coordinate? Sorry, you all right. Has engineers do some, Susan's engineers do some, a bunch of his engineers do some, um, and we end up duplicating a ton of effort. So, would it be viable to, to detect this out of comp that we're running? It doesn't really solve the problem, though, because it, it's bigger than autoconf. Yeah, autoconf that, that, is just what we saw in our first round of testing. Yeah, and, and I think that's what makes Florian's idea of, of hacking up the compiler so that it can record when it uses, when it sees these implicit calls without a prototype and having that be stored by the compiler solves that problem. It allows us to get the data we need across every build. Um, I like that. Um, I, I, wor I just worry about all right, you know, once we've got the data, we start fixing these things. I don't want to see duplication across the distros. Um, and then how do we engage these upstreams that are practically dead? Because we're going to end up fixing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the, the only thing I can think of is creating an organization on GitLab or GitHub or one of the other source code sharing sites and start putting repositories there with the patches on top. Yeah, I guess if, if we get you know, a rep from Ubuntu and a, a rep from SUSE and a rep from Fedora and, and anybody else that wants to, to leverage off this work, I think that, that that's viable. Um, and it's probably the best solution given the state of the packages we're likely looking at. Yeah. In fact, we probably should have that, did, did that for the LTO transition <laughs> in retrospect. Yeah, I think it's harder there because, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the detection sure. for for uh, LTO or de LTO induced failure detection is actually harder for autoconf and related features. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm well aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Florian, um, when you activated the. I mean, you disable the implicit uh, declaration by default in RHEL. How many programs stopped uh, passing the tests? Because you rebuilt the full distro, or? When we did this first, I think that was in Fedora 26. OK, yeah. Uh, what happened is that we broke the lip standard C++ ABI. Oh, OK. <laughs> And then everybody ran away, I think. Said, oh my God, I don't, want to, I don't want to do this. Yeah. And then uh, I think it was like 400 differences or something like that that we could detect with Jeff's tester. And it had to is... have been more than that because it's this, this autocomp really hard. Did, was that before we, we had? No, we must have had the config.h diffing in there for that test. Yeah. Oh, maybe. maybe. So, is it possible, Florian, that those four hundred were packages that weren't regenerating the autocomp uh, configure scripts? 
no, no. I think no. I, I think it's not extremely widespread. It's basically five uh, percent or so of the distribution that needs fixing. That's my. I, I thought it was worse, but you're you're, you're closer to this, so I'll, I'll take your word. Five percent isn't terrible. It's still. I mean, it's still a lot. It's still a lot of packages. <laughs> and some of this stuff is really hard to fix. I looked at unzip, I think, fixing unzip. Uh, I hope I get that right. And I couldn't do it. I mean, how hard should that be? Uh, yeah, I'm I, surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I couldn't figure out in the build system how to do that in a clean way. Wow. And, and uh, basically make sure that it doesn't break any of the legacy targets. That I couldn't test, obviously, like or I don't know, data general Unix or something like that. Uh, uh, relatedly, it would it would help a lot if we make made a W missing declarations the default. Uh, it actually finds problems pretty often. Uh, it it warns when there is uh, 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 when there's no no header included that uh, declares the functions you use, you define. So, so it it warns if it will not warn that uh, you use a, diff, a different prototype. Yeah. So is that is that possibly an intermediate step that we could possibly do for GCC twelve? Well, we could uh, enable that by default for twelve, of course, right? It's it's just a warning, I, so that's no problem. I don't think that is useful, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, that was my question, if that is useful for this. Um, because it generates a lot of false positives. Um, and No, it generates zero false positives. It warns when there's no declaration. Yeah, but if you just compile one source file and then have, have uh, yeah, you could make these functions static, but. Yes, uh, or include the header for it. That's That's the whole point. If if you if you yeah, write code if you if, write code without headers uh, for the for the public functions you have, then you're asking for problems. That's that's what the warning is about. Yeah, but then you have to basically invalidate all textbooks on C because that's how they start out teaching people to to write C. Yes, but it's just a warning, and it wouldn't practice. Still. I'm not sure if that really helps, and I think for uh, for the, the 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 type safety issue that I'm not sharing declar function declarations in a header, I think LTO is the better answer, and then you can check that the definition and the call side have both the same type. I think LTO is. And that's what LTO is the answer for this, and that's what distributions are already doing. I think that was my five minute warning. Yeah. Yeah. So is this something that, um, Red Hat is likely to uh, dedicate resources to tackling Florian. Do you have a sense for that? Uh, <laughs> uh, basically, uh, you told me not to pursue this like a year ago or two. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I knew how painful this this last slide is, is why. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm working on revising this decision. So. And that's fine. It was it was really a matter of, of looking at what we had in front of us and saying, yeah. you know, what are the most important places to invest? And and things change, you know, and, and we knock things off and maybe this maybe it's the time to come back to this. And so that's why I asked the question. I, I no longer am part of that decision process. Um, yeah. No, I'm I, I, I I'm going to make a proposal an internal proposal to spend resources on this. Okay. And, and I, I assume think that as a project would have no um, conceptual objections to cleaning this up. I, I, I can't yeah. see how they would, I can't see any place where they would reject the concept 
what I could see them rejecting is the timing. But if we're doing, if we're talking about thirteen, we're far enough out that they're not going to worry about it yet. Yeah, and uh, the, I, I, I'm targeting thirteen because then, at least for the active upstreams, distributions have a chance to pick up the fixes via upstream activity and realizes yeah. it's too late for twelve. Oh yeah, yeah, way too late. Yeah. Well, as I said, I like the idea of having GCC leave a a little artifact in the file system that you can go look for. That to me solves a the the how do you get good data problem. That and that I will tell you consistently how big this problem really is. Yeah. The one so the, the, I thought at one time and I I don't know if the SUSE guys are online. I thought at one time the SUSE guys had a hack. Um that changed flags when running configure. Yeah, like I know maybe. that doesn't solve, yeah, I know that doesn't solve the whole problem, but it might get us, it might be enough to help us kind of identify what is outside of configure. Uh, and, you, and you don't need the log file uh, in any special way uh, for anything except out of comp. Yeah, I think you can treat Compiling conf test.c differently from everything else. Yeah, I thought they had a hack to do that. Yeah. Um, it's certainly it's, it's certainly attractive to do that. <laughs> On the other hand, yeah. I feel like we should make the effort and clean this up properly. Well, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing about that. What I'm trying to figure out is, is are there ways we can start carving this up a little bit so that it's not a, a one step transition? Yeah, and you could uh, com uh, combine the conf test C hack with the uh, audit directory output. Right, and so that, that gives you the what are the source changes we have to that that packages have to make versus what are the auto conf changes that we got to address. Exactly. Right. Yeah, we need to lock uh, in the first. We also need to lock the file name, obviously, and then we can see if it's conf test. Let's see, that should already. Cover that, and if it looks good, then except for autoconf, then maybe the conf test C is hack is the answer for now. Um, yeah. Um, uh, this is Carlos. I would say I agree with Florian. There's there's investment that I think we can make in here to improve all this, which is why I think we're looking at this again. And I will think about more ways to share the work and the work product so that the distributions have to do this alone, I think. that That's probably key about this. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got enough distro contacts. I think this is one of these cases where we have to, we have to work with everybody and see what we want to do. 